Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Lee. In today's video, I would like to show you how you can use Nix to set up a dev environment on a project basis. Let's get started. First of all, let me open my terminal. And then I'm going to um, the temp folder. I'm going to create a new folder called um, demo. You may have the question of why you want to use Nix to set up a dev environment for a specific project. From my understanding, there are two use cases here. The first use case is to package all the tools that um, you need for your project in a flake.nix file. So whoever have access to your Git repository can simply run Nix develop and Nix will prepare the environment for them to run your code. The other use case is that if you don't want to install some CRI tools or some versions of CRI tools globally, so you can just put this um, tool on the flag.nix file uh, in this project folder, then you can always access those tools uh, for that project only. Okay, that's enough talking. Let me give you some demos so you have a clear understanding on what to do. Um, so now we've got um, nothing in this folder. And um, if I do tofu versions, as you can see, there is no tofu available. Um, but um, what if I want to use open tofu in this um, folder? I have prepared uh, some templates that we can use. So in this case, I just need to do nix flake init template GitHub, my username, my git repository, and then I just need to specify shell. Um, if I don't specify shell, it's fine. It will just also use shell because that is the default template. So um, it will create this flake.nix files in this directory now. Let's have a look what it has. So we can see there are two inputs URL here. The first one is the systems.url, which defines some, some systems that can be used um, to run this, um, this flake. Um, and the second one is the Nix pa packages URL, and by default, I'm using the shorthand here, which represents some unstable channel. So you don't need to worry about this part, just focus on here. So I, as you can see here, I'm, I'm having the package defined here. Uh, by default, you use the hello package. So let's say I want to have the open tofu, I can just change this one to open tofu, and then save this. Next, I just need to do Nix develop hyphen C, um, pass in the shell variable, um, and um, Nix will create this flake.log file in this directory. And then now I've got tofu, right? It's working. So if I don't need it, I can exit and tofu is gone. So it's very convenient for you to just put whatever package that you need uh, on those on that um, flake.nix file and Nix will prepare that for you. Okay, so this is very useful if you can find all your applications um, on the Nix packages. What if the application is not available there? Uh, one one option is to try to find it on the uh, NUR, Nix user repository, I think that's the name. Um, so let's open my browser and then we can do NUR Nix. So here it is. So we can find a lot of packages here. You can see there are 5,000 of them. So let me just use one of my package as example here. So um, let me do a little bit cleaned up. Um, flake. All right, so it's clean now. So I can do nix uh, flake init and template. I will use the NUR. Um, it also creates a flake.nix file here. So let's have a look. So um, on top of those two inputs we just talked about, it's adding a new input, which is NUR. And this is also a shorthand for the NUR repository. Um, and you can see I've got an overlay here. So NUR will be kind of injected into the uh, next packages here. So I can use it here. So let's say I want to use case CRI. So I can just uh, put the full, um, string here so pkgs.nur.repos.myusername.kcri right so if you want to use another cri tool from another user you can just copy here and paste it here it will be available let me show you how 
So let me just save this one, quit, and do the same. Develop hyphen C and pass in the shell command. It will get this CRI built, case CRI built. So I can do case CRI hyphen C, keep up case, hello world. So it will just create this one for me, right? Very convenient, but um, I do have KCLRI um, available locally, but I think you get the idea how you can just use the packages available on this um, NUR, okay? Okay, so the next one I want to demonstrate is the Python template that I have prepared. Uh, let me show you what it looks like. You probably have seen that from my previous video. So let's have a look. We can remove these two files, and then I can do next flake init python so we also have this flake.nix file here um, and it is python 312 and it's getting this um, library jw crypto libraries installed as well so um, let's go to nix os um, you can go to download um, and if you search python um, packages i think so here so there are so many different packages here. So for example, if you need YQ, you can just put YQ here so you can use that. So let me show you how we can use this um, to set up this environment to run um, Python code. Um, let me just go back to my blog post. I want to reuse one of the uh, Python code here. So the first thing we do is to copy and generate the RSA key and then ECC key. Once that's done, we can do jwe.py, copy the code here, right? And then we need to do next develop, hyphen C, shell. This will um, also create this flake.log file for us and then prepare Python for me. So I just need to do Python, jwe.py, um, you can see the JWE token has been generated, right? Um, and be that means the library is available inside this folder now, okay? If I exit and run again, I can't even run it because Python is not um, available in my environment, all right? Okay, so far we have talked about the packages available on NixOS, on NUR, how to use Python. So what if the package that you want to use is not available there? So it's no one has you know built it before. What can you do? So in this case, you need to write your own package file. Um, it can be intimidating um, at first, but uh, once you know how to do it, it's actually quite simple. And in my blog post, I'm actually showing you a shortcut to generate this package file um, directly using some tools. Let me show you how. Um, let me go back to my main page. This is the one. So the, the package we are going to use or the tools we are going to use is called nix init. Um, so let me just remove this folder. Um, demo. I'll create another folder called, um, maybe you call default. Let's go to default. Uh, and then we will use nix init to generate um, the, the package file for us. So we can do nix shell and then nix packages, nix init. Once that's done, we need to find a repository that um, is not available on nix. I know which one is not, so let's use harness CRI. <laughs> because I have just built this one before. Uh, let me copy this one. So we can do nix init and put in the URL and then you will find the version. Okay, so you can see you've got the error message here. It's pretty hard to read, <laughs> to be honest. It means the nix pkgs is not available on the nix path. So in this particular case, you just need to um, use this variable in front of um, nix init command. Um, this is this is happening because I'm running nix on Mac OS. If you're on nix OS, you will have that on your nix path. So if we take a look at the nix path, there is no nix pkgs, right? So anyway, so let's just put this into our command. We can do init. 
So next, let's copy this CRI uh, repository again. And I will leave everything as default. And then it will, um, smart, it will be smart enough to tell which package to use. Um, and then we just output this one to the local directory. Once it's done, we can just simply do um, nix flake init and then use my template. It's called local. So let's have a look what this uh, flake does. Um, it's really simple. So it's basically calling the uh, default.nix file in this directory. So you will just build it and then put it into a shell for you. Uh, so we've got two files here. We can do nix develop hyphen C pass in the shell variable. Um, Nix will again, you know, build this one for me and I've got harness available, right? Um, so if you need to verify if this package is working or not, you can actually run the Nix build command, you know, to verify this is working. So here is the Nix build command we can copy. Um, so what it does is um, it will actually build um, a package based on the default.nix. But again, because I don't have the um, nix um, packages in my nix path, I need to copy that. Um, let me go back to here. All right. So if we build successful, you can have this result folder uh, in this inside this folder. This is actually a sim link to your Nix store, right? So we can run this CRI as results being harness. So it also works in this way, okay? So if you don't want to use the Nix develop, so you can also use Nix build to first validate the default.nix is working um, and then I'll use the CRI and this way as well. Um, if you want to use DRR EMB, I don't know how to pronounce that. If you have that available in store on your system, you can actually use that with Nix as well. So what we do is I can do um, echo and then use flake because I've got the flake.nix inside this folder, right? So then I can save this one to the .envrc file. Um, and then I just need to do dremv allowed. And then I've got harness available whenever I go inside this folder right default so you can see uh, it's got auto loaded so it's very 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 convenient um, to use the dr env to load this one automatically for us instead of running the nix develop command every time we are here okay so as you can see the nix init command is very very useful to help you to um, generate this package file automatically when the package is not available on Nix PKGS. It can also be useful if you want to use a different version of the CRI tool, right? So you just use Nix init, put in your um, Git repository URL and then specify what version you want that default.nix file to be ungenerated. And then you can just use the flake to load this new default.nix file to make the specific version of the package available for you. Okay, so that's all I want to show you today. If you have any questions, please leave your comments down below and I will try my best to get back to you. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.